Hudson River from New York City and westward into the state of New Jersey is the city of Englewood. Englewood could be any one of hundreds of American communities, population 25,000, Main Street with busy stores, banks, and movie theaters, attractive suburban homes with their neat lawns and their well-groomed look. In size and in the kind of people who live here, Englewood is like many other American towns. And that was one of the reasons it has become the first town in the world to have an unusual kind of telephone service. Oh, I'll go see over there. You finish your coffee, John. I'll answer it. Probably the mailman. John, it's from Sally. She says the baby has the measles. Oh, dear. Well, now, measles, that's not so serious. All kids get them sooner or later. John Warren, you know Ruthie is only 14 months old. Poor little dear. I'm worried. Well, if you're worried, why don't you call her up? You've got her number in that little book of yours. No, it's just about 8 o'clock in San Francisco. They'll be up. You know, I believe I will. Go ahead. Call her. You'll feel better. It isn't too early out there? Oh, no, it's, it's 11 o'clock here. That means it's 8 o'clock out there. Hello? Sally? Sally, this is Mother. Simple, wasn't it? She just picked up her telephone and dialed her daughter in San Francisco, California. In a matter of seconds, she is talking with her. Simple, and yet you are seeing the results of many, many years of coordinated effort in research engineering, and operating experience. It's hard for us to realize today that in the early 1880s, the telephone was considered a newfangled contraption. Boy operators manned the switchboards in those days, and it was an adventure to be able to talk with friends or relatives on the other side of town. The telephone, at last, was filling a deep human need. The need of people separated from one another to talk with each other. Soon, alert girl operators replaced the boys. New types of instruments were developed, and the telephone grew up with a growing America. The demand for telephone service snowballed. Indeed, the use of the telephone became so tremendous that by the 1920s, dial service was rapidly being introduced to help handle the increased volume of calls. As the calls increased, more operators were needed. More calls to handle meant more jobs to do and more people to fill those jobs. This has been the story all through the development of the telephone. For instance, in the days when we had little or no dial service, the Bell system had 270,000 employees. By the time 70% of the telephones were dialed, there were 600,000 employees, more than twice as many. But the remarkable use of the telephone was only part of the story of change in American life. As villages became towns, and towns became industrial cities, 
people's interests broadened. Where those early citizens were thrilled to telephone across town, people now wanted to call towns and cities across the nation. Finally, they wanted their voices to span the oceans. And they did. Truly, America had grown up. All of which brings us back to Englewood. From many of Englewood's telephones, you could already dial any one of more than four million other telephones in the surrounding territory. A fine example of modern telephone service and therefore a fine proving ground for this new type of long distance service. A proving ground to answer such questions as, will customers like the service? Do they find it easy to use? What improvements can be made? This first installation now enables telephone users to dial their own long distance calls as well as their local calls and calls to nearby communities. The equipment that makes this service possible is among the most complex that man has ever devised. When you dial a number, the equipment obediently receives the information, stores it up, and remembers it. It searches out an electrical pathway for your call, choosing the one that is most suitable at a given instant. If it finds one pathway blocked, it tries another, and another, and another. If it runs into trouble, it automatically reports the trouble and its probable source. Parts of the equipment connected with other parts exchange information. They do this sometimes by a touch system such as the blind use in reading braille. Sometimes it's done with a stream of electrons flowing through space. Sometimes it uses an elaborate system of musical notes played in chords that are heard and interpreted by a mechanical ear. But even that's not all of it. Keeping track of the details of the call is done automatically too. When you dial a number, holes are punched in a continuous tape representing your telephone number and the number you dial. More holes are punched to show the time when you start talking and when you finish talking and hang up. If you get a busy signal or the number doesn't answer, no charge is made. Since all this information is in the form of tiny holes in a long piece of paper, the meaning of these tiny holes has to be expressed in words and figures. This is done by running the tape through several machines which assemble the information, translate, sort and summarize it, figure the length of your call, apply the correct rate, and, you guessed it, type your toll statement. But for the Englewood telephone user, it's as easy as dialing a local call. Remember that number Mrs. Warren looked up in her personal telephone notebook? 318 Garfield 5 2368. The only difference between that and a local number is the three digits at the beginning. 318 is the code for the San Francisco area. If her daughter had lived in Chicago, Mrs. Warren would have dialed the code 312 and then the telephone number. Cleveland, 216. Boston, 617. Altogether, more than 80 numbered areas are planned for the United States and parts of Canada. For some time past, Area numbers like these have been used by telephone operators in dialing long-distance calls. When the people in the Englewood area with one and two party lines were given this service, they could dial to 13 of these areas. That meant that more than 11 million telephones could be dialed from Englewood. When will the 11 million be able to dial Englewood? And what about the remaining millions of telephones in the Bell system? The answer lies in the future. But this much we do know. 
Over the years, we have seen the results of a successful formula. Planned research to anticipate the demands of a growing nation. Available resources, plus the continued efforts of many people. This combination has given America steady improvements in telephone service. And the story of long distance dialing points the way to even better telephone service for you tomorrow.